Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing great and that you I wish you a very uh, happy new year. That's really important. I hope you got um, great sales during December and during the beginning of January you'll see that the sales are going are going to decrease. Um, however, I've started pretty well my January um, my January month. It's the sales are actually still great, so I think people are still buying a gift probably, or you know because they got the gift card, they're probably buying their own gift. So I hope um, this is doing still well for you. And today we're going to talk about how to publish in English when it's not your um, mother tongue. Uh, many people ask me how to publish in English when you don't very speak very well English or you don't really know if you speak well or anything so we'll try to answer this uh, together so I have divided in uh, four different categories uh, can we publish in English when you don't speak English or at least you don't speak very well English the strategy to use when you when English is not your mother tongue the websites you can use and other solutions so with that any further ado just let's get started Is. Can we publish in English when it's not your mother tongue? The answer is yes. Yes, we can. <laughs> Everything's possible, guys. This has to be your mindset. Everything can be possible. Be open to new opportunities. Be open to new markets. Be ready to live the life you want. That's really important. So yes, you can publish in English. That's for everyone. Everyone has a computer. Everyone has a internet connection nowadays, especially if you're going to work and publish on KDP, you have an internet connection, so you can publish in English. Um, there are specific ways to get there and many other solutions, but yes, it is possible, even if your mother tongue is Chinese, that is possible. So what's the strategy? Well, it's pretty simple. But you need to use simple sentences. That means you have two points. The one, you speak English, but you don't speak very well. So you can use and make very simple sentences without any mistake. Or you don't speak any English, but you can use simple sentences because you're going to put your translator translation on the computer. You're going to write your sentence and the computer is going to translate something very simple. And when it's simple, the computer can translate something that is um, true and people would, I mean, sometimes you translate something but it's not really a good translation. It doesn't mean nothing at all. So when it's simple, keep it simple because it can be translated. Use websites to get translation. We'll see later which one we can use. And make very easy notebook. Make things very simple. Don't try to use high content or that, that kind of stuff. Try to publish um, low or medium content that would be a lot better and try to publish on easy markets people that are not in phone of grammar English grammar I'm talking about the US market I know um, they are not that into um, very specific vocabulary or very nice grammar they just want to go to the point they have a goal they want to um, write down in their um, notebook it has to be that they have to understand of course but they are not as much as into English as English people for instance the British market so I think the US market is always happy with everything I would say it's a lot easier if you try to publish on the US market if you don't speak English they are more open-minded about it and about the websites to translate the things if we have Google translation that is free which is great it translates from many 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 many, many different um, languages however sometimes the translation is not perfect uh, if you use simple sentences as I said that would be great uh, I think you need to have a little bit of knowledge 
of English if you want to use Google Translation to check if it sounds great. Otherwise, you have Deepo, which is the best translator website in the world, I think. But you have to pay if you want something good. So that's why I put Google Translations first, because it's totally free. And if you have a doubt too, you can just put your translation, your Google translation into the search bar on Google, you know, and check if there is any mistake or something, you will find uh, solutions. Also, I'm talking about Reverso, which is great, especially for French. It's totally free. It's nice. And you also have, if you're looking for very specific uh, words, I would say that um, Word Reference is a very good website, but it's not a website to translate entire text. And also check which um, website, website is the best to translate in English your own language. I know in France we have Reverso, which is really great to translate from French to English, but I'm sure if you speak uh, German, that would be Reverso, probably the best version. There is something into your country uh, that is the best, so don't forget to check that out. But there are also other uh, solutions. The first one is not the easiest, but it's okay to learn English. There are many books about grammar, English grammar, and you can learn English with probably two, three books. I mean, I started, I learned English at school, of course, but um, I took three books from, uh, um, I think it's Cambridge University or something, and I studied the three books, and then I was able to understand writing English. I mean, I'm not the best at English, but, you know, you can understand and check if the things are up good or not. Also, you can ask on social media if you need to find something that sounds great to try to have a nice title of if there is a special special um, phrases or something. Ask, just ask on social media. You can ask through a translator, however, it's expensive. Or you can ask through a translator, someone who is learning into your own group of friends or something. And you can only you can also use only picture. Remember, I said if you use a very easy notebook to fill up, you can use just simple pictures for many of the items that are in your book. So that could be a great idea instead of making very long sentences or complicated sentences, like add your phone number. You just have to add this pictogram, and that's it. So. Yeah, that's up to you. You can try to find things very easy and more you get to know English and more you can publish media contents and with the time probably high content if you're learning English or you try to listen to English. Also don't forget to check your concurrence what the vocabulary they use. Sometimes there is a specific vocabulary you don't know. Sometimes I publish things I don't know the specific vocabulary but because I found it by English many other concurrents, many other people, I can understand um, the new vocabulary. I see, mm, this is a specific vocabulary, so I'm going to take it, right? So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe, give it a thumbs up if you like the video, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye!